the company of curlews. Chapter 3 Dada, where had he been? Dai and me were asked to go up to the slaughterhouse one Saturday. Anthony was with my mother visiting. My grandfather had forgotten to pick up the cow's tails the week before. They were waiting for him in the main building. He was going to work on a fishing net. Dai didn't have the stomach for the slaughterhouse. He didn't like seeing the carcasses all about and all, and all the blood running in the channels. What's the matter with you, I'd say? You were happy enough to eat them. And he would go all dithery like, as if he was about to faint. Bloody blubber. And remember to ask, my grandfather said, for half a dozen cow horns as well. The top man at the mart gave us the package and he warned us, Whatever you do, don't open it. Make sure you give it to your grandfather. He'd wrapped the stuff in an old western mail and tied some string around. Well, we were walking back through the market with this pack full of tails and horns. Head down I was, reading a cartoon on it. Tom Shun Carty. There was blood seeping through into the print. As we came through the main gates, stepping out of the Nelson Hotel, was Dick Salmon. Well, we were scared. He was eyeing us up. He hadn't gone blind by then. Where are you two scallies off to, he said. What's in a pack, he said. It's my grandfather's, I said. Anything that is Owen Portis is mine. Give it you. He's my brother. He's not, I said. Give it your boy or I'll give you a clutch. He came at me, grabbed the pack by the string. I hung on. Stubbornness and the devil was not going to get the pack out of my grip. Well, the string broke and the whole thing fell apart. Oh, my God, I said. The stench of the rancid beast hit the side of my nose. I retched. Die wretched, Dick Salmon wretched. On the floor there was a, a cowlach. A mixture mound dumped itself outside the front door of the hotel. A mix of sawn off horns, muck, blood and bits of animal and, and, and stinking it was. Dick turned peaky beyond. Blood drained. He gagged. Wobbled like a boxer, taking a combination. Achavi, he shouted, Achavi. And he stormed off into the depths of the market. We never saw him again until that day on the river bank. I remember thinking to myself, where had he been to get like that? And where was he going? When we finally got home, Grandfather said, No, not to worry, boys, poor old Dick. Eh? He's on a slippery slope. I'll have to go and see to him. My grandfather, Owen Francis, lost his first son, killed in action flying over Europe in 1942. My mother, Hilary Francis, near Richards, was taken in by her husband's family, me a two-year-old and her pregnant with Anthony. From the day that his son, my father, died, my grandfather put all his energy into nurturing me, Anthony, and his second son, David, my uncle, Di. Even more so when Anthony was lost in the river that day, Oh, I, I never seen a man cry before like that.
Owen, known as Owen Pulchdy, was a wise man who hoped I would learn and conduct myself by his example. A man who would explain how to treat people right, say please, thank you, be kind and always put family first. He gave me a template for life that I needed to follow. He'd warn us, the river is the heart of the town, but it can be a dark heart. you got to be careful. My dada taught me to respect the river in different ways. Care for the fish, she'd say. Only take your fair share. Put the young ones back for later. He'd lift his pointing finger and wink at me. I didn't know my own father. I'd never been told anything about him except that he had died. His loss, I imagine, was far too painful for my family. I never asked about him and I was never told. My grandfather, Dada I called him, born in 1899, joined the army at 16. He'd gone down the train station to see his closest friend go off to war, Richard Edwards, known as Dick Salmon. My dada just jumped on the train and went to war. A tall, good-looking man served in the Great War as a stretcher-bearer in the 15th Carmarthen Battalion, served at Mamet's Wood on the Somme and in the Third Battle of Ypres. And when he came home, he married my Nana Lol, Florence Blackbird. I never asked him about the Great War, and I was never told. My dada had been a coracle fisherman since he was a boy. Our family able to trace back over 200 years of fishing on the river. Years ago, the coraclers strongly believed that a witch or a kind of devil was hovering over every pond on the river, especially the deeper pools beyond the White Bridge. The only way to protect themselves from the devil was to throw a piece of iron into the river bottom before fishing. Something like a nail would be enough to keep you safe for the night. My dada used to say, What a load of old tosh! I noticed one day in his coracle shed that in his paddle there was a small iron cross, about two inches long, squeezed into the rowing blade. They told me that Dada, his father, had told him a bit about the war before he died, that he had seen far more scary things than witches and ghouls, and had in fact met the devil one day in a place he called No Man's Land. So he decided that throwing the iron in the river was a complete waste of time. But, said I, my grandfather wasn't comfortable with it. That's what my father said. He didn't want to go against his son's choice altogether. So, to play safe, he took a small cross of iron and hammered it into the blade of the paddle. And he said the goddess of the water would be pleased. I'll tell you, bedtimes with the old bugger were frightening. He reckoned his grandfather had told him stories that he wanted to tell us. Anthony would go to bed earlier than us with Mam, and Nana would put us to bed. Two minutes later, Owen Pulty, Dada, the river monster that he was, would come stamping up the stairs, growling at us. Where are those boys? I'm going to eat them for my supper. I'm very hungry. Stop it, Owen, Nana Lol would call after him. You'll scare the boys and wake Anthony. <laughs> 